Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Marcos, and I will be doing a presentation on the funding one for context reframes. And to help illustrate this concept, I will be using an application called JPLAT, which I will I'll do a short little demo after I uh, explain what the funding one with the context reframes is. And without further ado, some motivation. So the tools we have for defining languages um, with these regular expressions and contextual grammars, the tools we have are very powerful. Um, but however, it's also very important to know where they stop, where they can't go any further, where their limits are. In the plumbing lemma, a very important concept in identifying how far they could take us. Um, but I have an example, my, my little metaphor. <laughs> says you wouldn't build a house with only a screwdriver. So basically you would take the screwdriver and identify, okay, the screwdriver can, can screw stuff, but you can't really do much else. So I'm going to need a more powerful tool, um, aka more tools. So for those of you that forgot, a context free grammar is a grammar in which every production rule is you know terminal and then a list of terminals and variables. Um, some examples of this would be like a syntax of both programming languages, which is C, Java. Um, just the syntax stuff you would need a more powerful language to, to say build a compiler or something. Um, and then the regular expressions, um, which I won't go into. So without further ado, I'm going to pump you up. <laughs> Those of you that are in the sports, you if not, I apologize. <laughs> The pumping level for context free grammars. Basically, we got new rules. Uh, it's the same old pumping level. You, uh, now we're defining a string S where <clears throat> it's equal to five subscripts instead of three. Uh, you got U, V, X, Y, and Z. Um, so the rules are conditions V, X, and Y, the length of that must be less than P. Uh, v and Y, the length of that must be greater than zero. And this entire string S um, you could pump uh, V and Y up as much as you want, and those should still be an L. Uh, the conditions basically say that you know you can't have an empty string for V or Y. Uh, they must be you know, greater than zero. You can't put them both with the empty string. Basically, always for a regular question. Not too much differences there. Uh, so I'm going to give a simple example that relates um, to not like how we did it with regular expressions, but this is a uh, using using a pumping lemma, pumping lemma for context free grammars. Same concept, um, but now we have pump two shelf strings instead of one. So to help introduce that, it's kind of a simple example. Um, so you have a, a language, uh, 0n, 1n, 0n, 1n. And we're gonna, we're gonna say that, okay, this is a context free grammar. And our job is to prove that it's not. So, we're going to split it up into substrings, uh, 0p, 1p, 0p, 1p. You're going to have the s um, in that form. And uh, basically, if you if you try to pump up either, like, really in simple terms, if you try to pump up um, one of these or two of these things, you're, you're going to eventually have something that's uneven. You're going to have more zeros than ones. And, you know, it, it, it explains that both b and y contain at most one type of the zeros and ones, uh, the string will be in the form u, v squared, x, y squared, z. And no matter how, what you put as those b and y values, you're going to have an invalid string. It's not going to exist in the language. Um, and that's basically enough to prove that this language is not a context free grammar. So without further ado, I'm Jay Flack. It's a software for experimenting, you know, formal language. So you can see the list on the little, uh, the little application. So you can choose, you know, finite automata, push down automata, Turing machines. It's good for experimenting with those, with those tools. So you can kind of visually see how it's working um, instead of just, you know, just pen and paper kind of trying to figure it out. Started as a series of tools at a Polytech Institute around 1990, and now it's at you. Um, so it's still being updated. I think they just came out with an 8.0. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty cool tool. I'm going to show you guys that, and that will be it. Um, so let's pull a kick. 
Okay. So we got we got J flat going. All right. Um, so like I said, there's a lot of uh, options here. We're going to choose context free pumping dilemma, and they'll pull up this window. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of cool how they set it up. They set it up basically like a game. Um, so you can you can pick which language you want to uh, pump up, and then you go first, or the computer goes first. And I'll kind of show you that. So for this purpose of the demo, I'm going to go first, and I'm going to pick this language, which is a non-context free language. So we're going to use Pong to show that, and you'll quickly see how how difficult they become. I showed you an example earlier, and it was pretty basic. It was like you know, it was like, kind of like what we did before. But this will show like how complicated what context-free grammars can become. Okay. okay, so I got that language. Um, it's going to ask me to select the value for m, which is um, we'll say n. I'm not going to question them. Okay, so I'm gonna pick three, answer. So now the computer goes. So like I go first and then the computer goes. And the computer is gonna select a string that you know has that of that number of iterations in and which I think is the value of P. They don't explicitly say that. So three, so you see they, they pick the string, three A's, three B's, three C's, and that exists in the language. So like, okay. Now it's my turn to to decompose this in a way that, that fits all the criteria. So you'll see I can adjust how many A's and B's and C's I can go on here. So let me see, I'll pick two A's for you. And I'm gonna want to you know put it in a way that that meets the conditions. So it tells me, okay, B and Y, the length of that is greater than one. That's a really nice brief visual representation of this. Okay, and then you can see the length so I'm gonna just pick this this setup. And now we can kind of kind of open it. I'm gonna say, okay, those are my those are my values, those are my five substrings. I think I have AA, A, and two empty strings, which is valid because the length of it is still greater than one. And uh, the value of Z is the length of six. I'm pretty much pushing everything to the end. And uh let's see that. Okay, so now the computer fires back at me and it's like, okay, you think that's set up correctly? Well, I'm gonna show you that it's not. So you can see that. It, it picks a string, says, okay, I'm going to pick I'm going to square that, I'm going to square that, and now I'm going to have four A's, three B's, and three C's, and that is not in the language. So you need to rethink your uh, your evaluation, sir. It's, that's not right. So you can see these, these cases over here. So what it does is kind of remind you of, of what you tried already. So I click add. It says, okay, I tried V as a non empty string and Y as an empty string, which is V not empty, more, more. So that reminds me, okay, I tried that already. Um, I should probably try a, a different case. So now I'm going to try with uh, both non empty. It appears a fire wagon again, it says, okay, that, that doesn't work either. And you can add that. And basically just try out different combinations, and it's really, it's a really cool tool. So that is JPLAT. Um, if you guys have any questions on my presentation, you can leave it in the comments section. Thank you for listening, and um, I'll see you guys in class.